Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flader Mouse. We've got another custom machined shotgun slug to show you today. This slug is made out of 303 stainless steel and was made by a channel called Tactical G Code. Now Tim is a master machinist and he was curious to see how different metals would behave if you made the slugs exactly the same but out of seven different metals. Even though the slugs are exactly the same dimensionally, each type of round is still going to have its unique metallurgical properties like weight and hardness. So let's see how this round behaves being shot out of a smoothbore 12 gauge shotgun. Our first bullet trap is a 4 inch stack of magazines. Hit it! Well, it drops a, a, quite a bit, huh? Yeah, because I was aiming right about there. Okay. The whole hit, so. Okay. Because all the the uh, armchair snipers are going to be dogging you. Oh, it didn't even go through. So it didn't go through? No. Wow. Oh. It must have just displaced it. So we'll have to open that up uh, later and pull it out. Okay, we'll see if Baron can bounce the slug off the plate. Okay, shot two. Hit it. Oh, -ho. That hit hard. Uh -huh. Okay. So you bounced it, you hit it here. Got a new shiny mark there, and then it went through, bounced off. That's that's what we call trick shooting, or actually it's not a trick because it's just geometry. Okay, shot three, stainless steel. Hit it. All three rounds were on target. None of them appeared to go through, so it looks like we captured all three of them this time. It should be noted that this stainless steel round has the same weight as our mild steel round that we shot in a previous video. And just like the mild steel round, the stainless steel round tended to drop a little bit. So even though he was aiming at the Tau Flader Mouse sticker there, you can see how much it dropped. Again, we're seeing a little wobble in the slug as it's flying through the air, and I believe it's because of the shockwave cone. It's kind of bouncing off the sides of the cone. Since these are shot out of a smoothbore shotgun, we don't have that spin stabilization. It's all balance and drag that's causing these to fly in a straight manner. Now one of the main goals of these tests is to try to capture the rounds after they've gone through paper or hit steel or go through wood. We set the AR-500 plate at about a 22 degree angle and also angled it down a little bit in order to deflect the round off the plate and right into that box of sand. And you can really see that round oscillating around in that invisible shockwave cone. Our third bullet trap is a OSB construction header. It's over five inches thick or 13 millimeters and constructed of a bunch of strands of wood glued and compressed together. It's a very tough target. We had a lot of consistency in the flight characteristics with these three rounds. Each one had that little wobble. And again, that's because we don't have the spin stability that a normal bullet would have. And of course, if you tried to shoot these through a rifled shotgun, it would just destroy the rifling because you're shooting a very hard metal. We were able to recover all three rounds this time, so we're doing something right. And uh, this is what they look like. This is the first round that we pulled out of the magazine trap. It's still in very good condition and even mics out to the exact same tolerances as it was before we shot it. Now the round we shot at the AR-500 plate's a little different story. These are the three pieces that we found in our sand trap. I think it's safe to say the AR-500 plate won out in this battle, and there's no chance that a round like this at this velocity of about 1,200 feet per second could possibly damage that AR-500 plate. In fact, you need a velocity of about 3,000 feet per second before this round would even have a chance of piercing it. I used a circular saw to chop the round out of the OSB wood block. It had close to eight centimeters of penetration, or almost three inches. And this is the round as it looks after I pulled it out of the wood. Uh, again, it, no deformation, 
mics out the exact same specs as it was when we loaded it. Unfortunately, I got a little close with the saw blade and nicked it a little bit. At the same time, I chopped out the titanium slug from the previous video. And again, this round had no damage at all to it. And it went in almost the same depth as the stainless steel slug. And I thought that was interesting. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.